All right, well, DJing, what did get me into DJing? Well, my, my mum is a professional piano teacher, so I was always, you know, from an early age, listening to Bach and Tchaikovsky. And then I'd always listen to the radio and, you know, and I pictured in my mind the fact that I, I sort of loved a funky vibe. I loved sort of old school kind of that, that James Brown sort of riff in some of the music I heard. And then eventually I realised it was more dance orientated. Then there was no house music. It was just sort of funk and soul. So really, I suppose it's the radio got me into DJing and slowly progressed from there, really. First time I ever DJed was, I would say I was probably about nine or ten, and I can remember taking my sister's, she had like a, a, a small turntable. I don't know if you remember, it's a sort of, Op it had a lid, you open it up, small turntable, you know, you put the needle on the record, no speed adjustment or anything like that. I was about nine, and I remember taking it in a wheelbarrow up the road to, it was, it was a charity kind of event, but it was to do with the, the church. So there were a lot of well-to-do people there, and I was putting records on, you know, no, of course, no mixer. It was just put a record on, gap, another one. And I remember taking in during the blockheads, hit me with your rhythm stick, and I played that. I didn't have many records, so I thought I'd put the B-side on. So I put the B-side on, which was NRF being some clever bastards. And I remember one of the adults politely sort of told me, I think you better turn that off. <laughs> so I was about nine, first ever gig. But then I did another gig then when I was 13 in Clandovery College. And that was for the six formers. And that was a little bit more fun. But there you go. Right, well, been doing little bits of DJing anywhere and everywhere. People always ask me, how do I get, you know, how should that, how can they get into DJing? How can they get into having paid gigs? Well, a good way is do house parties for family and friends, do them for free. And family and friends always invite other people around and they hear you play. And then they're more likely then to say, oh, well, you know, we heard your son or your daughter, they played some music can we, you know, can you play at our party? And you do that for free. But when you do the second one for free, you're also going to get people that don't know you at all because their friends are going to be, they are going to invite their friends. So quite possibly you don't know any of them or a lot of these particular people. So at that point is the golden opportunity to start charging. And that's pretty much what I did. I used to do discos for family and for friends. And then I'd say probably sort of the mid to early 80s, I started doing paid gigs because friends of the family would turn up and their friends would turn up and they'd say, oh, you know, we like what you do. Can you do our gigs? So I'd say, you know, around about sort of 83, 84 was pretty much the first paid gigs. Well, there's loads of memorable events. And when you've been DJing for as long as I do, you know, a wedding is a wedding. But I can remember having one wedding in a huge marquee. There was probably only about 200 people. But they'd spent, I think, about £15,000. It was in Altrincham. They spent £15,000 just on the marquee. And it was completely decked out in star cloth. And I turned up and it was just amazing. There were a couple of bands playing as well. And it was just the whole atmosphere of the, the actual evening. It was very well put together. There were two people solely booked just to make sure things ran smoothly. So there was none of this, oh, when does the band start? When does the DJ start? You know, there was a guy by the band says, right, you know, five more minutes, that's it, finish, off you go. Right, DJ, you ready? Right, get ready, okay, you're on. Um, there was, it was almost as though the whole evening was produced to, f to have this fantastic event, this wedding for the bride and groom. Of course, they didn't know any of this was happening. Well, of course, they knew the band was playing, etc. But it was, it was military pre precision, but then it was a great gig. You didn't have to worry about being set up anywhere because they said, right, that's your place. Great place to set up. Lighting for me as well. So I turned up with all my lighting and didn't even need it because there was lighting there, plus the massive star cloth. And I think the main part of the evening was the crowd weren't bothered about what I played. I still played your 
run-of-the-mill wedding music but then I could slip in loads of funk and soul and old-school R&B and a bit of hip-hop and house music and they just loved it they thoroughly enjoyed the night it went on till about three ish in the morning and the dance floor was full all night so amazing evening right worst ever gig was another wedding and I won't mention the hotel well I yeah it's the Comra Hotel in Aberystwyth and I remember the first thing is the bride gave me a playlist and she said I want you to play this playlist now as any DJ out there knows luckily 99.9% .9 of the time when they give you a playlist you play off the playlist Oops, just the microphone uh, or the microphone pick up and um, you know you can add your own tracks so I'd had this playlist, I made sure I'd got all of the CDs, the files ready to play and I started playing three or four of them and then I played one of my own tracks and she wasn't having this and this was before the first dance as well and she said uh, straight away as soon as I played a track I wanted to play she came up no I want you to play the playlist and it clicked she actually did want me to play only the playlist I had this poor little girl come up to me, can you, do, can you play the cha-cha slide? I said, sorry, I can't. And I can remember her going to her parents, he won't play it. And I remember the parents looking at me like, you bastard. It's like, well, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. So that, you know, I mean, you imagine you've got that to contend with. And then I remember doing the first dance, it was so funny, I'm not gonna say what the amplifier was, but, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, please welcome the bride and groom on the dance floor. Hey, everyone's clapping like this. And then the music starts <laughs> about a minute through. The amplifier stops working. And I'm like, I, I literally, I just wanted to go, bye bye. <laughs> I just wanted to melt. Uh, it was so embarrassing. So, but again, you know, you, you've got to think professionally. So the first thing was, you know, I uh, do you know, I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, the last thing you want to do is panic because as soon as you panic, everyone else will panic. So you need to remain calm. Luckily, I remained calm. My pants were full of shit though, but I did remain calm. And I went down, turned the amp on again. Oh, it went off, sorry. So I turned it off, then on again. It still didn't work. So I turned it off. I sort of, I can remember going, please God, please work, please. Turned it back on, click, it went on. So thank God for that. And what I did is I turned it down and I noticed it was quite hot. What had happened after I'd got home and opened it up is inside most big power amplifiers, there are fans, cooling fans. What they do is they cool the heat sinks and the cable going to the heat that the fan had come away. So of course the fan wasn't working, which meant the amplifier got too hot and cut out. So what I had to do then was during the rest of the evening, the management of the hotel loved me because they actually said you're the first DJ we've never asked to come and turn the music down. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank you very much, that's great. Little did they know I couldn't turn the bloody music up because if I did the amp would carry on going off. So that was my worst gig and that happened I think about four or five years ago. I think, yeah, this, this lady, you know, said, you play the playlist. And I suppose there was a little bit of me going, well, you, did sort of like put me in a position so maybe you deserve this but but you're professional and again a wedding you know even though you do thousands of weddings you know bride and groom it's their hopefully one and only wedding you've got to make it good for them favorite album has got to be the stevie wonder one i'm trying to think um hot than july beautiful album fantastic i my brother-in-law Tony who's now departed he bought me that many years ago and I listened to it in continually to the extent where it, it just wore out but beautiful album beautiful artwork and wonderful tracks <laughs> favorite artist Ooh, tough one really let me think favorite oh god blimey now that's that's a hard one um, I would say Michael Jackson. I, I've got to be honest with you. A lot of people don't like him, um, but to be quite honest, the guy was a genius. Simple, period. He was a genius with every single way. He, you know, his voice, his style, his attitude, but I think he was on, you know, he, he basically destroyed himself. And I think because he knew too much.
best gig I've ever been to has got to be in Ibiza. I went to Amnesia and that was in through a company called Nextbeat. That was in 2010. And I remember turning up about sort of one o'clock in the morning, going to the main room in Amnesia. And I looked, huge place, Roger Sanchez was playing. And I'm thinking, F no, this is like, you're right to swear, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was, yeah. Right. No, I was, I was thinking, this is like really quiet. I mean, it was a huge room. There's only about sort of, I'd say two or 300 people in there, but it was a massive room. So it seemed empty. But of course, come about three or four o'clock in the morning, it was rammed and it was absolutely rocking. Wonderful night. Right, my favorite film has got to be Contact. I like the fact that in the film, it's all about you know, other entities, other beings out there. And if you think about it, the universe is so big, if there isn't someone out there, then it's an absolute complete waste of bloody space. So, you know, I, I just like it. I like the whole vibe of the film. So it's a great film. I could watch it again and again. Right, I used to make wooden furniture with Welsh oak, but had to move out my house and that sort of like stopped, so I had to get rid of it all. Uh, at the moment, it's just mainly DJing and maybe a tiny bit of sponsorship, but I am looking to start doing some laser hire. So I've got some really good quality laser world lasers, uh, Swiss lab made in Switzerland, and I'm gonna start hopefully going out and doing laser hire as well. And yeah, I mean, got a couple of other, excuse me a second. Hello. Yeah, hello. Um, okay, um, I'll 19,999 pounds, okay? Yeah? <laughs> All right. Cheers. Okay, bye, bye. The offer to you now is 19,999 pounds. Yeah, um, that's about it, really. Uh, last time I cried was recently on my daughter's birthday because I couldn't see her, but, but Ella, dad loves you. Well, it's the children and stuff, isn't it? They, they play a big part in my life. Uh, for anyone who, who knows some of my personal life, there are certain issues relating to some of my kids, but I mean, I've got a little boy called Blaze, and when we first named him, a lot of people were like, Blaze, that's a really silly name. But now, when we say the word Blaze to a lot of people, they're like, wow, that is so cool. And he's, he's exactly like me. He loves Kit. He's always on the decks. And I'm, I'm a very lucky person. So he's always around me ankles playing with Kit. So yeah, it's, it's the children all the way. Dream car, oh god, no, I, oh, that's a t that's a tough one. I would say an R8 actually. I like them. I've always liked Audis, and an R8, beautiful. So yeah. All right, we'll start the YouTube in. I think it was August two thousand and six, and I opened it because I was told that. I, well, I always like to watch old school videos like Chic and all this, that and the other. And then I found out that you could watch them online on YouTube. So I just started watching them. And then I went on and f I, I remember I Googled or I YouTubed, you know, how to DJ lessons. And there were a few there, there was only a handful, but it was like, watch this, I'm gonna show you 50%, but if you want the other 50%, you have gotta buy my DVD. And I thought that's a bit tight, that. So I thought, well, I can do my own video tutorials. And that's pretty much what started it. Uh, I also did drum tutorials as well. But the first video I ever put on was my niece, actually, Cherie, playing, singing Wade in the Water. So that's the first one I ever put on, yeah. <laughs> Best piece of kit I think exists is still got to be the Pacemaker by Tonum. Because it's, it, you stick it in your hand, uh, you can make it wireless. So for example, you know, we've got a microphone here now with a plug in there. What I could do, 
I could go from the line out into here and then I could go it could go to a powered speaker so you could actually walk around and do a mix it's got headphone as well you can mix properly on it it's got a crossfade you've got bass mid and treble you've got effects and some of the pacemakers I think they're like 120 gig so you can get a shitload of music on there and it's you can fit it in your hand and still to this day I think it's a wonderful piece of kit I think second to that has got to be a Technics turntable but then of course we get to more like the Pioneer, Nexus etc etc but top piece of kit if I was on a desert island it would be the pacemaker beyond a shadow of a doubt Worst piece of kit, a lot of people say, how come you never do any bad reviews on items? And the simple answer is, if I do get any crap or bad items, I just don't review them. And I, I explain this to the companies. And there was a company I won't name who sent me an LED light. And I contacted one of the, the managers of that company in America. And I actually told him, I said, look, this is actually crap. And he agreed with me. That's why it never went into big production. <laughs> so... But I'm not going to say what it was, but it was it was like a tri LED of some description. I think best place I've ever been tying in with DJing and ever been is Ibiza with Nextbeat. They had Nextbeat goes to Ibiza. I was in a villa there and true story this. We one evening we, we went to a party out in the hills. It took us two or three hours to find the place. It was down a little lane. Eventually when we got there it was just this mansion, huge mansion and I remember looking down and I've got a vi there's an actual video on YouTube looking down a big swimming pool and then underneath the swimming pool there were more apartments and I can remember walking down these steps and looking at these apartments and thinking wow they're just open and I remember walking to try and walk into one of the rooms and I went douche and I hit a huge glass window. It was so clear. I just went bang straight into it. <laughs> so, but I mean, what a place. I mean, amazing. The, the guy, I forget his name now, the producer, he produced New Order Blue Monday. Can you, um, can you think of, oh, no. no. Oh, what's his blinking name? You'll probably know it, but it, uh, he was there and it was actually his party. So amazing. It, uh, I'll remember it in a bit, but. I think ideal gig would be, you know, big marquees, two or three rooms, um, a party for anyone or everyone and different styles of music in each room. You know, no idiots, no druggies, no mad people, just people who want to appreciate the music. That's the important thing. A lot of people seem to think, you know, if you go to a rave, you've got to have drugs. You don't have to. The music should be able to take you to a new level anyway. So it would be in the middle of nowhere, loads of marquees, decent sound system, and away you go, which will bring on to actually, I used to do PA hire for functions in, in mid Wales. There were parties that were in Talabont and there were some in I think a place called Slimbriani Dam or Reservoir, sorry. And we used to have private parties there that started sort of Friday evening and went on to like Monday morning and something like that, sort of private party, maybe by a lake, big marquees, loads of free booze and good tunes. million pounds I would buy my own house make sure I've got a decent motor for a change and probably give the rest away to family and friends so that's pretty much it you must you must do you must you get an R8 as well I get, I get an R8 oh bloody too right yeah I get an R8 yeah <laughs> favourite food has got to be salmon and olives love them Worst food, baked beans. Baked beans. Uh, I'm sorry, if I was Prime Minister, baked beans would be banned. They'd all be taken off the shelves and burnt. Oh, well, I don't really watch much TV, but I think I'm going to do... Say what everyone probably, uh, or a lot of people say, is Top Gear. I love it. 
Clarkson. You either love him or hate him. I don't love the guy, but I, I like his attitude. His attitude is basically up yours. I'm going to say what I want. And people appreciate that, really. He does say a few controversial things now and again. Does piss a few people off. But at least he explains himself. He says how he feels. So it, it's, it's got to be top gear, yeah. Ideal woman is, oh, I've got to be careful here, is actually is my partner Yvette because she's a wonderful lady. Perfect. She is, she is a good, yeah, uh, you know, got to be careful there. But no, she's a great lady. We, we get on really well. We've got the same sense of humour. We laugh at the same things, you know, and uh, if I piss her off, you know, I just have to wear more makeup to cover the eye. Sort of, uh. <laughs> Masters at work, definitely. Masters at work or DJ Sneak or Armin van Helden. The hats, well, again, bald head, head gets cold, you wear a hat. And of course what I do in the video is I just put a hat on because where I used to live was in a chapel. It was always cold in there. So I put a hat on because otherwise I'd freeze me bits off. And then, you know, I'd lose that, so I'd get another one, get another one. Eventually, people were like, you're always changing your hats. I thought, great idea, just wear hats all the time. I haven't got one now, but yeah. So sometimes the more wackier, the better. And quite often, people come up to me go, oh, yeah, you're that guy who wears those strange hats. It's like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> well, the first one I had was a Canon, which was a mini DV camera. And I went through about three or four of those. Then I had a cheap Sony camera. Then I had the Sony, which you've got, was it the SLR? Yeah, it's next to me, I can't see it. What's it? Yeah, it's the HDRSR, isn't it? HDRSR 11. I've been through three, three of those. And now I've got another Sony, which is a lot better. It's this one here. Just dropped my phone. That one there, and that is top buzz, love it. So I've probably been, I would say, in the region of about 20. Uh, Money-wise, I'm not rich, but I'm definitely rich with family and friends I've got around me. And even though, like I said earlier, I don't see a couple of my children, they're healthy. So I always, you know, when I get down, I have to think, well, you know what? Maybe don't see my kids, but there are parents out there who maybe lost their children forever and they will never see them again. At least I know my children are healthy. So, you know. A lot of people have said, have you sold out? Like when you came to get in the mix or you always seem to be doing Pioneer reviews. Well, Pioneer were one of the first companies to to, to jump on the Ella Skins kind of vibe and help me out. So of course I'm gonna look after them, you know. In a way I was very lucky because I didn't start at the bottom. Uh, there was Bez Tax before Pioneer, but they only sent me a few items. But then, um, who wouldn't, you know, if you or anyone watching was all of a sudden contacted by Pioneer and they said, you know, we like your YouTube hits, we'd like you to do a demo on this piece of kit and we're not gonna pay you, but you can have it for free, I think, it would only be a Muppet who would say, oh, no, I don't want to do that. They, of course, everyone would do it. So I agreed. Same with getting a mix. I was contacted. We had a chat with the boss from getting a mix. And we had an idea where I do some filming for getting a mix. So during the course of about six months, I worked with getting the mix. But at the same time, I was doing my own thing. So in a way, the videos that I make, I don't get paid for them most of the time, but on the odd occasion, I do get paid for them. So in a way, you know, you look at it and you think, well, Jonathan's done over 3,400 videos. That's a lot of time spent and time is money. And I can't just do this for nothing. So there has to be a certain amount of revenue. So I haven't been sold out at all. No. <laughs> <coughs> and then finally though, on the flip side to that, um, it must be good to get free stuff. Oh yes, it's very good to get free stuff. Uh, it's nice opening a brand new box and having a fiddle with something. And 
again, a lot of the stuff, going back to are you rich? Well, um, I, to be quite honest, I wouldn't be able to afford to buy a lot of the kit I've got anyway. Like some of the top quality CD players, you know, they're getting on for sort of 15, 16 hundred pounds each. And if I was, as I was say six or seven years ago, doing the amount of gigs I was doing then, I'm not doing so many now because of the crap that has gone through, I've been going through in my life. But even then I wouldn't have been able to afford to get all these pieces of kit. So it is great to have new pieces of kit, you know? And it works both ways because you're reviewing it for them and you get to... Exactly, I get free pieces of kit and in return I do free videos for the companies and people watch those videos, they not only see the item, they know how to use the item. So if they can see it and they watch a video of someone explaining how to use it, they're more likely to buy it then and open the box and work, you know, make it work straight away because they've seen the tutorials on it. This is Jonathan, DJ Tutor, aka Elliskins, saying thank you very much for watching and spending a bit of your time and I'll say practice and enjoy. Nice one. You know, I get a lot of freebies, so this one here is courtesy of getting a mix. Cool, you know what? This is a beaut. I tell you what, this is really good quality. Wood, material, metal, sorted. Cheers.